Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is August the 11th, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just kind of hanging out, actually digesting some nice food which that we're about to get into for this food corner. So that's nice, that's good. Happy Friday to you and yours, if that's when you're listening to this. I know I'm kind of recording it at, like, the end of the night, so it'll probably be, like, another day. But, hey. Um, Let's see. I should have the name of this food place. I don't. But, um, you know, I will say for the locals, it's a spot in Mason. Uh, If you want to hit me up, I will definitely just tell you. You know, I'll drop it. I'm not gatekeeping. But um, it was this hibachi sushi buffet situation and gosh golly it was so good it was so yummy um essentially you start off with like this big tray and you're just like well no let me start from the top because you start off and you pick either rice or noodle and you get this metal bowl and you take this metal bowl and you put all the stuff that you want on top of, you know, either your rice or your noodles. So, you know, I'm putting onions on here, I'm putting jalapenos on here. Uh, There's so much, there's so much. Uh, In terms of meat, I got a lot of seafood, but there was steak that I put on there too. There was chicken, I didn't put that on. Oh man, there were scallops, which I was like, ooh, okay, okay, let's go. So, I mean, there was so much, I got squid on there. Uh, In terms of the buffet part, There was, granted, you could get more hibachi. I found that out later, but I was just so full. I was like, I'm okay. So that came out yummy, wonderful. And then the buffet part, they just had everything. Like so much. Like I I can't even describe it uh, all. But um, man, the crab rangoons are really good. The sushi in and of itself is really good. There's so many, so many kinds of that. Like they had like a two panel sushi bar. Man, I I was overstimulated. It was so yum, so good. Uh, and, and even like a couple of desserts were pretty good. I'll say that. Uh, the they had like little mini cream cheese bites that were pretty yummy. Uh, man, that was probably the best part of the dessert part. Uh, but overall, very good. It was actually really busy today, but um, still would definitely go back again. But uh, between that and the Korean barbecue place, oof. I feel like I want to go back to the Korean barbecue place more, but I think that's just because I like heavy foods, even though like this is actually sitting pretty well in my stomach right now, and I didn't like get overwhelmed food-wise, stomach-wise, you know? Like, I, 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 I want to go back. I want my redemption arc. <laughs> um, let's see here. Other than that, you know, like I said, it, it's just been a good week. Overall, it's been solid. I had like a bout of like, I almost want to say melancholy or something, or I wasn't too stoked. But I worked through it. It was nice to actually, you know, get to see some of my friends and hang out with them and eat with them. That was really good. You know, we, it was very it was very well um, needed. Uh, I hate saying that. I needed this. <laughs> it's always so corny when you like have that thought. <laughs> but no, the vibes were tight. It was good. It was nice. All right. Let me um, go ahead and fire it up and then we'll talk about some news. Our first, our first story comes from Al Jazeera. Uganda defiant after World Bank halts funding over anti-LGBTQ law. So we've covered this, um, at least, you know, part of it in terms of how uh, Uganda has said, okay, we're going to have a strict anti-LGBTQ law. Essentially, you know, you can't present like this. You can't... Um, you can't attract, they, they say that they don't want the attraction of minors. They also are like, well, you can't spread HIV, like all this kind of stuff. And essentially it's just, it's just, it just feels like a lot of fear mongering. And I don't know, just you're using religion to more or less say, oh, we don't like you guys. We don't like the way you guys live. So we're making your lifestyle illegal. 
um, up to like, you know, jail time and potentially, I believe, even like execution. So just completely outlawing uh, a group of people's way of life in Uganda. And, you know, we've talked about, too, that this isn't the only African country or just country in general in the, you know, the year of 2023 that still does this kind of shit. But um, the World Bank made a um, decision to suspend new funding to Uganda in response to a harsh anti-LGBTQ LGBTQ law and has promised to find alternative sources of credit. Um, Uganda has uh, promised to, sorry, <laughs> got twisted up there. But um, President Yauri Museveni, uh, I'm getting the name wrong, uh, who has been in office since 1986, said in a statement on Thursday that Uganda was trying to reduce borrowing and would not give in to pressure from foreign institutions. It is therefore unfortunate that the World Bank and other actors dare to want to coerce us into abandoning our faith, culture, principles, and sovereignty using money. They really underestimate all Africans. Um, Museveni said that if Uganda needs to borrow, it could tap other sources and other production and oil production expected to start by 2025 uh, and would provide additional revenues. So essentially they're undaunted. Um, you know, I've even seen, you know, some people on the street say like, you know, they're still happy. Like, oh yeah, thank you for making this like bill, which is very sad. It's very disgusting to me. Um, let's see here. I did want to kind of do the, read the recap here. The bill imposes capital punishment for aggravated homosexuality, which is a crazy term. Um, an offense that includes transmitting HIV through gay sex and 20 years in prison for promoting homosexuality. Promoting. Uh, which is crazy. It's also crazy that it's like, oh, only gay people transmit HIV. So that's that's why we're doing this. Like, that's part of this. Like, it's fucking wild. Um, let's see. I'm not going to burp. Burp in my throat. Uh, the World Bank said on Tuesday that the law contradicted its values and it would suspend new funding until it could test measures to prevent discrimination in projects it finances. We believe our vision to eradicate poverty on a livable planet can only succeed if it includes everyone irrespective of race, gender, or sexuality. This law undermines those efforts. Inclusion and non-discrimination sit at the heart of our work around the world. Um... Let's see, but the World Bank um, has an existing portfolio of $5.2 billion in Uganda, and those projects will not be affected. So essentially, they're not pulling the rug out from under Uganda. They're just saying, hey, we are not funding any more, um, you know, any future projects beyond what we're doing already. And, you know, this may or may not be a big move. You know, we will see. Time will tell. I know that the value like of Ugandan currency has gone down sharply in response to this. So, you know, there are some immediate effects um, as well as like, you know, the Biden administration. Like there's been I don't want to say there's sanctions, but I know they're like like kind of um, doing shit with like the visas and stuff like that. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I've kind of said it before, though, when you do this kind of sanction style shit, it winds up only affecting the poorest people in the country. So I feel like it doesn't have the desired effect. Um, I don't think this is actually going to get people to change per se, but I do think it does send a good message in that regard of like saying, hey, you guys have made this decision. You guys aren't coming off that decision. And there's a cause and effect to that that we don't want to financially support now what you guys are doing. Um, so in that regard, I, you know, I do get that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just an unfortunate situation all around. I, I don't think this is necessarily going to, you know, help Uganda or like I said, change any course, but, um, you know, you sometimes you gotta do what you gotta fucking do here. And, and like I said, they are still continuing to be involved in Uganda. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do personally hope that these countries that have this kind of draconian outlook on homosexuality really just come off it, you know, like, 
it's just, it's just so crazy that this day and age that we flipped into this society of like being like we have to be so against this like this is so other this is so different we have to criminalize it we have to outlaw it like it's it's just a lifestyle like you know it's it's literally hurting no one <laughs> or if it is hurting someone it's hurting someone in the exact same way that a normal uh quote-unquote normal you know cishet relationship is you know what i mean like it it's fucking crazy man uh let's go ahead and move along uh let's see here from the associated press Judge sends FTX, uh, FTX founder Sam Bakeman fried to jail, says crypto mogul tampered with witnesses. Um, I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm not super surprised here. It, it did seem that uh, SBF, Sam Bakeman fried um, only wanted to play ball so much, you know, he seemed like he was chomping at the bit to not just prove his innocence, but, like, almost like he wanted to, like, wave a wand somehow and make this all fucking go away. Like, as if, if you had just gave him a little bit more time, he could have fixed all of the problems, all of the fraud, all, uh, <laughs> all of the mismanagement of this company, this literal crypto exchange empire that got so big that they had Larry David and Tom Brady in commercials. They had literal arenas with their name on them, you know? They, they, they had gotten so huge, so big. And then people finally actually looked at the numbers and they're like, wait a second. Like, they're trading with people's money. That You can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. And, you know, they were doing that through this other group, the uh, Alameda Research Group that was run by his um, former girlfriend... Uh, who they listen to this article. Um, da, 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 I, can't, I don't have her name at the ready, but we'll, I'm sure we'll get to it. But, um, you yeah, know, let's just start from the top. Um, FTX founder Sam Bankman fried left a federal courtroom in handcuffs Friday when a judge revoked his bail after concluding that the fallen cryptocurrency whiz had repeatedly tried to influence witnesses against him. So it seems like he was kind of doing a little bit more than just saying, hey, I'm going to do this house arrest. I'm going to try to prove my innocence and, and maybe even try to fix things. But like, bro, you literally have like limited Internet access. <laughs> um, but it turns out he just kind of maybe used this shit to, you know, maybe reach out a little bit too much to maybe the wrong people he's not supposed to. But um, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. They took him. I believe he's actually still he's in the same um jail that um gosh what's his name uh we've talked about him before the farmer bro martin scarelli uh the jail that he went to so he's like in that same holding kind of like almost an interesting not an irony but just eh, birds of a feather i guess uh let's see here da -da -da -da. kaplan said there was probable cause to believe that sbf had tried to tamper with witnesses at least twice since his december arrest most recently by showing a journalist the private writings of a formal girlfriend and key witness against him and in January when he reached out to FTX's general counsel with an encrypted communication. And essentially that communication is like, hey, I just wanted to, you know, catch up with you. I wanted to kind of vet, see, you know, get on the same page, make sure we're on the same side of this you know that we both have our p's and q's together which is no you can't do that <laughs> um let's see here da, 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 da. the judge said he concluded that there was a probability that sbf had tried to influence both anticipated trial witnesses and quite likely others whose names we don't even know to get them to back off to have them hedge their cooperation with the government um so yeah i mean these are all just big no-nos uh yeah this is where he was being held uh he was sent for the night to the metropolitan detention center in brooklyn which was previously housed uh convicted pharma bro pharmaceutical executive martin scarelli um and oh convicted sex offenders r kelly and Gisley maxwell i mean yeah i mean just the same same people <laughs> all a bunch of heavy hitters <laughs> Uh, which actually it's kind of fun. I feel like yes, we've covered all those. Yeah, there you go. I'm giving myself a little pat on the back. We've we've done commentary on all these motherfuckers. 
Uh, let's see here. I really wish I could have found her name. That's probably going to escape me. I know it's like Caroline. Yeah, Caroline Ellison. There you go. Um, essentially, she was one of the first people to say, hey, like, yes, you got me. I did something wrong here. Um, she's facing a lot of time, but essentially she is cooperating with the government. She's cooperating uh, with prosecution. So most likely she's going to get, you know, a much lighter sentence. Um, I mean, there's others who are also cooperating with the government who are, you know, involved here. So, um, you know, I, I don't know all the players and stuff by name. I know, we, I think we covered one other guy. Once again, that dude's escaping me. But um, it doesn't look good for SBF. And uh, this right here is just, I think, another setback. I think even if he had wrote out his bail clean, he still was going to be up against it. And I still think he's going to be looking at some severe time. But, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're potentially, the judge was kind of hinting like, yo, what you could have been doing could have been getting you more felonies. So, yeah, let's just start with you going back to jail and staying there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a bit of an update. Just wanted to kind of talk about it, touch base. Uh, let's see here. I know that um, SBS lawyers are saying, ah, this is, um, you know, they did nothing wrong. You know, XBF did nothing wrong. He was, you know... Just I feel like he, he's just trying to plead his case and like, you know, these people are kind of grasping at straws here saying he did anything untoward. Um, but uh, yeah, no, not looking good. Not looking good for uh, the guy. <laughs> the math is not mathing well. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next thing. Next beat from NPR. Garland names special counsel in Hunter Biden investigation. Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss, who has been investigating criminal allegations against President Biden's surviving son, Hunter Biden, has been named a special counsel. Uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland said Friday, Weiss made the request to be special counsel to Garland on Tuesday of this week. Now, Weiss is a Trump appointee as U.S. Attorney who was retained during the Biden administration. He has been investigating Hunter Biden since 2019. He has reached a tentative deal with Hunter Biden, but it collapsed amid scrutiny uh, recently from a Delaware federal judge. So essentially, this is an update on the Hunter Biden case. Uh, it's very odd because, we, you know, where we left it, essentially the judge is like, look, you guys have to make this deal work and you have to be able to explain it to me so that we know that it's very clear what's happening. Like, he's not getting some blanket immunity here. He's just getting it for, um, the tax charges. And I think the gun was left in. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure on that part, but, um, he just... Hunter Biden and his team were under the assumption that he was getting some sort of blanket immunity for everything and then some. And it's like, no, 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 you're not. And in the talks following that conversation, they haven't been able to reach any ground. So essentially, he is going to trial over these misdemeanors. And not only that, Weiss is essentially picking back up the investigation again. Now, I'm curious, though, because... Um, you know, I, I know that the House is like doing investigations. A lot of Republicans are chirping, but I haven't really heard anything concrete. They aren't giving any real evidence. They're saying shit like, oh, well, you know, he got this amount of money and then, oh, lo and behold, he gets a car for this amount. Isn't that crazy? Like, OK, sure. Like, I, I buy what you're selling. Like, trust me, it, it's not taking much for me to believe here that like Hunter Biden's like, you know, a potentially compromised, corrupt individual. But at the, at the end of the day, I don't hear any proof. And this Weiss guy has been at this shit for five years. And he showed you guys what they had. He didn't hold anything back. And I know that, like, the IRS are saying this shit. Like, they, they've got these special witnesses. They're like, he didn't, they didn't try hard enough. There wasn't enough, like, actual pressing on this shit. But it's like, that just doesn't sound like the majority opinion here. And yet again, this was a Trump-appointed guy. Biden kept him on for a reason. And I, I, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't see what good it's going to do having this exact thing happen again. What what thing is going to get uncovered here? And two, at this point, the opposition, you know, the, the Trump base, the Republicans, like they're not going to hear it. Like they're just going to say this is all a Biden 
corruption, you know, uh, freak show. Like, it, they're just going to keep running that narrative over and over and over again. But that being said, it is relevant, mostly relevant, that um, Hunter Biden is going to trial. I personally actually like that. <laughs> because it, I, I do actually think that all, like, all three parties that day wanted Biden to just get a deal. They wanted it to be done. But truly, you know, this Trump appointed judge is like, look, I'm at least feeling the heat in a way here. Right. And like, this is weird. Like, this is a weird deal when you actually read it out out loud. So like, make it make sense. And they couldn't make it make sense. So I mean, here we are. I, I would not mind if Hunter Biden has to get his comeuppance for having a gun when he shouldn't have. And I haven't really explained that too well. But essentially, Hunter Biden has had a drug addiction. Uh, you know, he says, you know he's, he's got a little bit of a drug problem. He likes it a crack. And um, essentially, during this time, you know, he was battling his addiction, but he went ahead and got a gun. And when you get a gun, you have to, like, you know, fill out or say this, like, oath thing or whatever, essentially, you know, saying that, you know, you are, you know, sound mind about it. I don't, I don't know it all. It's not, I don't know. It's like a Miranda or whatever, Miranda writes. But um, essentially, he violated that by like saying like, you know, he, you know, sober, sound mind type shit. Like he's not, he was not able to, he was not in the right place to be owning a gun and he bought a gun. So that's what they were digging him on. Plus the tax shit, which they have him on. But once again, I just don't know where's the, where's more beef? Where, where is there anything else here? Like, you know, or, or are we just doing this run around and he's just going to get the same deal, you know, and he's going to fade off into the, you know, the sunset i don't know <laughs> whatever uh, yeah lock them all up that's what i say <laughs> okay i got one more story to talk about and then i'll let you go actually it's a bit of an update we're refrying it orders up um well let me take my break and then we'll finish this off Also, shout out to line cooks. <laughs> shout out to all restaurant workers, actually. Y'all the best. Um, NBC News. YouTuber Mr. Beast sued by Mr. Beast Burger, food delivery service partner. Um, so yeah, the burger is biting back. Um, we covered, I believe, was it earlier this week? Last week? You know, it is all times a flat circle, whatever. But we, cur- we covered previously that uh, Jimmy Donaldson, Mr. Beast, uh, he was going to sue virtual dining concepts uh, for essentially just making uh, low quality and occasionally ined- inevitable food. A lot of people had very negative, very bad reviews, um, you know, essentially saying like, oh, I-, I ordered this food and it was like raw um, you know, like, I, I ordered this for my kids, and now they're crying, like, I can't believe this, why would Mr. Beast do this to my family, <laughs> but, um, uh, I, I guess throughout it all, Mr. Beast has kind of said, hey, I'm, I'm very well aware, and, like, I, I'm with you, I think this shit is also gross, and I wish I could get out of it, but, like, I can't, and, like, I made a bad deal, but, um, essentially, uh, VDC, has been peeping this shit, and they're like, uh, okay, so you're gonna sue us? Actually, we're going to sue you, and I believe it's, like, maybe, like, a nine-figure amount. I'm not sure. It might be, like, a hundred mil. I, I, how much they're suing? I, I don't know the numbers here. Y'all know I hate numbers, but, uh, let's read their statement. Uh, this case is about a social media celebrity who believes his fame means that his word does not matter, that the facts do, do not matter. <laughs> excuse me, and that he can renege and breach his contractual obligations without consequence. Uh, And that was said in the lawsuit. Um, And they say that he is mistaken. Also, it's crazy too, because something I I failed to mention, that Mr. Beast says that he didn't get paid and he was working this shit for three years, you know? Like, and I remember the commercials, obviously I've seen his face on the rappers and stuff like that. Um... But yeah, apparently, you know, for, for all this shit, he's saying, hey, I did this shit and I haven't even seen a dime. So, I mean, that that's a bold claim. I'm very curious that, that is, if that is the case, then how is this 
working out at all then like <laughs> but um let's see here what else do i want to pull from here uh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we already talked about how he had read reviews just you know saying that it was disgusting blah 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 um an effort to oh and this is where they talk about um uh, mr beast's disparaging comments essentially you know the stuff he was saying online uh via twitter or x um, in an effort to pressure plaintiffs into transferring to him part of their interest in Mr. Beastburger, Donaldson bullied plaintiffs on social media and threatened to terminate the party's agreements if plaintiffs did not ex- accede to his demands. Uh, in so doing, he fabricated a number of purported breaches of the party's agreement, each of which was demonstrably false. And they also like use his words against him further, more or less saying like, hey, he said all this talk about how our food was like so gross and inevitable. And inevitably, yeah, more people said that our food was gross and inevitable. And yeah, that hurt our numbers, that hurt our bottom line. So inevitably, yes, he made like a self-fulfilling prophecy and he's hurting the brand that he is a part of. And, you know, they have him on wax kind of saying at least like, hey, like this shit is really bad. And um, he even says that he signed a bad deal. And part of what he's wanting is like, hey, like either get me off of this shit, like get me, you know, allow me to take my name off. Or because what initially he wanted was like, no, give me more control so that I can have better insight on this and feel more comfortable. And they didn't want to play ball. And then he starts talking about, um, oh, like, I actually don't even like doing this shit anyway. I'm making Feastables, which is his little snack line. And apparently that's doing better. And he's, like, way happier about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's still tied to this. Like, this is still a part of his venture. And he's essentially dogging it. Like, that is fair. Like, that's happening. So maybe he does have himself in a pickle here. I'm not sure. Um, but something else I wanted to add about uh, VDC uh, VDC, which was co-founded by Robert Earl, the founder and CEO of Planet Hollywood. Now, Planet Hollywood's kind of interesting to me because Planet Hollywood was like, as a kid, I was, you know, I'm, I'm a child of the '90s, so I'm pretty sure I don't. I think Planet Hollywood's still a thing, just not as poppin', not as popular. But back in the day, like that was still like coming off of its zenith, I think. So I remember like seeing like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like a bunch of other cool celebrity action heroes and all these kinds of people like at Planet Hollywood with the leather jackets and they all look so cool. And I was like, man, I bet that's a poppin' restaurant. I bet that's really cool, really fancy. But um, nowadays I haven't heard good things about um, Planet Hollywood. I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's even still a thing. But um, Planet Hollywood lists Mariah Carey's Mariah's Cookies, Bravo's The Real House Bowls, and Baker Buddy's V's Cake Slice as some of its other ventures. So essentially they um, had Mr. Beast Burger as like their flagship. And they make this deal with him, and they kind of ride that wave. Um, Whether or not you can say, oh, like, was there a quality there? Um, That's murky right now. That's up for debate, right? But they did make a hard campaign push with Mr. Beast Burger. And along the way, they made other things like Mariah Carey's cookies. And and this. I I can't imagine how a real house bowl is going to go down. Also, I heard, too, apparently, um, DJ Polly, DJ Polly D from Jersey Shore has a, um, <laughs> he has a sub, uh, sub ghost kitchen. So that, that's his thing. You can get his authentic subs. <laughs> also, um, bonus points for the audience. If you have eaten at any of these ghost kitchens, uh, uh, please, you know, get, sound off in the comments, hit me up. I, I would love to hear your story. That, that would make me smile because I, I love a good food story, not to mention a food story that ties into, uh, you know, some news. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's where we'll leave it for now. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this lawsuit's going to go. Uh, I initially thought like, yeah, I, I mean, this shit is, does look pretty bad. 
Um, but at the end of the day, Mr. Beast did sign a contract, Young Beast, as he went by at one point, um, <laughs> which is really weird. <laughs> Mr. Beast is already enough. I don't need to think about him as Young Beast. Uh, but yeah, he made a bad move, and I, I don't know if he can necessarily, like, social media lawsuit his way out of it. Maybe he's in a snare here, and maybe he's going to have to pay up. Who knows? But uh, time will tell, and hopefully I get a chance to talk about it. Uh, and if you'd like to support the effort, uh, more than just listening, obviously that's the best. I'm, I'm sending out heart emojis. I'm radiating that energy to you right now. You've already done me the maximum. But if you'd like to support financially, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com, says Isaiah News. Uh, you become a newsie. I shout you out once a month. Also, I shout out, you know, whatever project you'd like, anything you're doing, I can do that for you. Uh, let's see, free ways to hit me up, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Feel free to hit me up on the socials. Uh, you know, I'm on them. Uh, hopefully, you're subscribed to the YouTube. That's also very helpful. Uh, you know, thumbs up, comments, all that kind of stuff. That's great. Uh, max stars, you know, full reviews. That 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 makes me smile. It's good for business. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for being a friend. And hopefully, I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye bye. Mwah.